Let's talk right quick about the visitor that was at Notre Dame this week, and that would be one Coach Ed Orgeron, who is kind of touring around, going to different football complexes, etc. I believe, uh, was it his son that was looking at Notre Dame for something? Uh, there was some reason why he was there. Uh, but also, remember, Coach O and Marcus Freeman, uh, honestly, like Freeman would have been at LSU if it had not been for Brian Kelly swooping in really at the last minute and making him an offer that he could not refuse. I This is interesting stuff because Coach O came in and spoke to the team and told them that they are going to win a national title with this group that is in this room. I One, do you really believe that he believes that? And, and then two... No. Uh, what is what is the purpose of all of this? Like, obviously, we know Coach O still under contract at LSU. I don't know that he's looking to get back into coaching this early. I mean, it's it's only been a few months since uh, since he's been gone. I'm curious your thoughts on on everything that has gone on in South Bend with her. Uh, I I don't look. I I think he's on just like a public speaking tour. That that's it. He, I, you know, I'm I'm gonna bet that you know. There's a chance he was probably paid to, uh, to to come speak to the team if I had to guess. Maybe not. I don't know. Him being under contract with LSU is irrelevant. Like he he's been terminated, and he's work, they're paying out his contract over over time. But but that's that's completely irrelevant. He's free to go do anything he'd like to do. Um, I love Kojo, and I appreciate what he did at LSU and what 2019 was. Uh, I'll never forget. Um, Going there and, and doing this, great, no problem. Uh, you know, he's always been a rah-rah, encouraging, motivational guy. And I bet all those guys, when he left there, felt like we can win a national championship. Um, I don't think he really believes that, I, but I think that's the Coach O rah-rah. And, um, I, you know, I don't know that I believe that, which I want good things for the thing. I like the Irish. I like Of course. Um, I like Marcus Freeman. Uh, I just think the talent separation between them and the top tier teams around the rest of the country, uh, we've seen over the last ten years, uh, be pretty big, just pretty damn big. So. And don't get me wrong, I think Marcus Freeman will help bridge that gap a little bit. I don't know that he can bridge it enough to be able to overtake uh, the, the few the few programs that are at the top of the sport right now. The argument, the argument that I heard, and this is the best argument for why. Um, I don't believe this, and I'll, I'll mimic and, 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 and rip off from, from where I don't even remember where I heard it. I wish I'd, I'd give them credit for it. But it was, can Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame recruit to compete at a top 22 level player? Yes. Can they compete for the top 65 kids? No. And that, therein lies the problem. Is starter for starter, they might be able to hang with the best teams in the country. But at some point in time, subs are going to come in the game. And when those subs rotate in, that's when mayhem happens because the subs that the best schools in the country are rotating in are just as good as every starter on the field. There just aren't enough spaces for them. And the subs that are in are going to significantly drop off, and that's where the damage is going to happen. Can you hang with a school for a quarter or two? Yeah. Why is it in the fourth quarter not even close? Because that's when depth takes over. And we'll, I think we'll get to see that. I really. agree with that like first week of the season uh, because it's going to be rather warm in Columbus, Ohio, when they head over to face Ohio State. You you yeah. might see a close game early. Uh, early. But then, of course, yeah. once Ohio State subs come in and, and Notre Dame subs come in, then, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, and that's, and, that's no, and the, the problem is, is what Marcus Freeman's doing this year, listen, the guys you recruit this year aren't, aren't significant playmakers this year unless you're going to get in transfers, okay? You got it. And Notre Dame's, you know, they're, they're, they're not pulling a ton of transfers. So I think we're going to see the fruits of Marcus really being able to compete in year two or three um, as he builds that program up a little more. But I don't know that they can hang it with the top 22 right now for the best in the country. Yeah, you, you might and be right. And it's not a knock on Notre Dame. That's no, of course not. not. No, of course not. I think uh, Ohio State opened a 13-point favorite. And, and honestly, I don't know that that's enough. No, that seat that, but but I, regardless of if it's enough, regardless of if Notre Dame covers or not, that number seems about right, though, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. 
Like to get yeah. anybody be willing that's not a Notre Dame fan to get a general Joe the public to bet on Notre Dame, you got to make it close to a two touchdown game. Yeah, because we have history of this. Yeah, you are not wrong. You are not wrong about that. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.